think one of the most important reminders that I give myself is I am a human being and no matter what part or stage I'm at in my life, emotions are good and necessary and beautiful. I think the biggest difference now is more that I have the awareness to connect with my emotions. So if I'm feeling sad or feeling blue or feeling angry or feeling hurt or feeling rage, anything, instead of feeling it and then suppressing it or feeling it and want to put a lid on it and allow myself to pretend that everything's okay or keep going and keep moving, that's where I become more aware now, is it's not about not having the emotion. It's about giving myself permission and love and compassion to have the emotion. And I'm always learning and I'm always finding new openings and new crevices to discover. And I see it more now as a beautiful journey instead of oh, if I'm sad, I have to be just sad. Or if I'm feeling depressed, I have to, you know, stay alone and stay in the darkness and, you know, whatever it may be. And I really feel now like it's about knowing yourself and what you need in every moment. And every day that you feel an emotion, it's going to be different because it's a different day. One of the best ways that I think starting off, if you're new to the emotional connectivity is journaling. Um, it's an assignment I give a lot of my clients when we start working together is so many of them have just never taken the time to even dig and try to connect to the emotions that they have. So one of the best exercises I give clients that I feel and I have received feedback from them works the best, and I did it myself, freeform writing. Um, is getting a journal and really setting the space for yourself. So even if you're in your car and you have 15 minutes before you're going into a meeting and you might be really nervous or you may have just had a call with a best friend and it pissed you off, is to give yourself space to just breathe, maybe turn all other noises off around you, turn on some soft music and allow yourself to just start writing. And the writing can be scribbles just to move your subconscious, or it can be real written words, a dear person that you're feeling the emotions from. And then I think the next step is to actually see what's beneath the emotion. So the first emotion that might come up is rage or anger or hurt or disappointment. And beneath that though, is always something that is within. So it's not, somebody else may trigger that in you, but really your work is to find out where that exists within and how you can love it, how you can have compassion for yourself and how you can work to start to cleanse it, not get rid of it, not try to push it away and put it in some box or like, you know, some big release and purge. You certainly are cleansing, but also to have the compassion for the emotion so that it doesn't feel like it's, you know, the stepchild that doesn't get to belong in your whole circle of emotions. Some of the best things that I've done to stay centered during all of it, depending on some holidays you may be with all of your family, some holidays it may be more intimate, depending on where you're at in your life. I find a routine and regular self-care practice is what keeps me grounded during those times. Because certainly you can not have a lot going on during the holidays and still feel the energy of the hustle and bustle and everyone running around and all the things you need to do. Um, so self-care practice, and to me that is not just my physical routine of doing pure bar and yoga and working out, but also self-care practice to me is getting out and being in nature or taking long walks and connecting, maybe giving my spa, myself an extra 30 minutes in the morning to meditate and just slowly give myself space and permission to set my intentions for the day and start each day with a real focus of how I want to feel, how I want to present myself to the world, how I intend to be that specific day. 
And then at nighttime to give myself a grounding practice where whether or not it's grabbing one of my crystals and sitting for 10 minutes and doing some breathing work or looking at my entire day and focusing on the things that I feel grateful for. Um, I also love a weekly routine of setting up your entire bathroom for like just this beautiful self-care ritual. So anything from having a bath and maybe you have, you know, like a perfect sparkling water with raspberries in it, or you make yourself some tea and, you know, doing, having the music, having the candle lit and giving myself like an hour and a half to just really focus on nourishing my body and my spirit, whatever I need at that time. A miracle to me happens every day. I believe there's a miracle in waking up and being gifted with breath in another day. Um, I think a lot of what people experience around them is based on where they allow their mind to focus. So for me, recently my grandmother passed away and her nickname from my grandpa was Honey Helen. And I was just at her funeral two days ago. And because of that nickname, I was closing my car trunk when I got home, going to yoga class. And I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone. And I shared that my grandma's nickname was Honey Helen. And in that moment, I closed my trunk and there was this bee standing on my trunk, just walking around. And it's not an abnormal occurrence to see a bee, but I kind of allowed it to be a little bit of a symbol and some sense of magic for me. And I was like, okay, if this is going to be it, let me, let me play with this a little bit and see where it takes me. And then other things started to happen where I was at the Starbucks drive through window during her funeral, right before we were headed in and with my family rolled down the window and a bee just came right up and was just buzzing right next to my window. Not because it wanted to come into the car or, you know, stay around the car, but it was just right there as my window was down. Then I went to yesterday to get a mani-pedi and the sign outside said, everyone else is taken, so just be yourself. And it had a big jar of honey and all this honeycomb around it. And then last night, my husband and I are sitting there and he's talking to me and he has his honeycomb undershorts on. <laughs> so I, I take all of that. I've never noticed honeycomb or things like that before. So that to me is magic. And it's because I'm also allowing and choosing and opening to see the connection to my grandma through that. Whether or not it's her or it's my symbolism and my magic to feel her love again is upon me. And so for me, miracles happen in many ways. I've had lots of clients of mine that have written out something they want to manifest or intend or I'll send them a meditation and it's about opening up the energy to feel what it's like to receive what it is that they were searching for. And sure enough, they'll call me a week or two weeks or even that afternoon and say, you are never, ever going to believe what just happened. And I'm like, lay it on me, try me. And I think it's the power of intention. It's the power of, if you allow and you open yourself up to the magic, to the miracles, you will receive them. So what I would recommend for anyone who's feeling alone or in maybe we'll call it a darker state during the holiday season is to allow it to be a time where they can really connect to themselves and what it is that they do want moving forward. So a lot of very many friends of mine, even a dear friend of mine recently lost her mother who was a pillar in their family, very young age, or someone may have just lost a relationship. It's grief in all forms. And I always offer as a recommendation or an invitation to those individuals to really give themselves the tenderness to feel whatever it is that they're feeling, whatever comes up, wherever their depth of sadness is, and to allow it to just be there, to know that it's not gonna be like this for forever. And while you're in this state and in this phase, and I've certainly gone through them myself, both 
during holidays and not during holidays. And it's awful, it's dark and it feels shitty. But if you can give yourself love and compassion and maybe even start to write out what you would like to feel in the future, you're at least opening yourself up to receive things down the road when it's time, when you've been able to connect to all of this other emotion that needs to work its way through. That is my recommendation. And to also reach out and seek support. So know what you need. And sometimes it may be time alone and some solace. And other times you may need a support network. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with needing other human beings and support in your life. Because if we can each honor that, then the time that you're in now, at some point in your life, you'll be able to be of service to someone who's going through what you're going through now. So if you can reach out and find inside what you know you need and allow yourself to be vulnerable enough to ask for it, I believe that that sets you on the path to healing.